Hello there, folks. Scott Galbraith, also known as The Great Scott here, and welcome to another Actors Roundtable. However, this one is kind of a, a special edition of the Actors Roundtable. If any of you have any seen any of my virtual volunteer segments, any of my live, live Facebook feeds, you know how proud I am about the fact that six years ago I got to make my screenwriting debut with a film called The Reconciler with some help from Sean Justice and Justice Pictures. Well, during the Actors' Roundtable 2, I had two of my castmates on there, and during the roundtable, I made a little joke about how the fourth uh, guest was kind of crashing a Reconciler reunion. And it's amazing how you get ideas. It suddenly occurred to me, hey, why don't I do a roundtable that is a Reconciler reunion? So all of my guests here today were involved in my screenwriting debut, The Reconciler, and we're going to have some talks about that as well as other things as well. Let me introduce you to today's guest panel. First up, we have a gentleman who has appeared in movies like Steven Spielberg's Lincoln, The Book of Ruth. He played Detective Tilton in The Reconciler, and he just actually recently celebrated his 100th IMDb credit. And, wow. yes, very impressive, very impressive. And, as of today, he holds the record for my most frequent guest. This is my fourth round table, and he has done three of them. Please say hello to Robert Shepard. Bob, how you doing, Bob? Good. Nice to see you again. Nice to see you again, yes. Let me know if you ever get sick of these, by the way. You're just so much fun to have here. That's why You're I keep having it. You're a good habit, sir. Well, thank you. I appreciate that. <laughs> All right, next up, we have a gentleman from Toronto, Canada, who has appeared in shows such as Flashpoint and Suits. He was in the movie Adam's Testament and A Murder of Innocence, which I was also in, and he played Detective Bill in The Reconciler. Please say hello to Frank Cheserin. How you doing, Frank? Nice um, to have you back. Great. Thank you, man. Thanks for having me. I appreciate it. Thank you. It. Anytime you have a guest back for only the second time, you know that you're doing something right. So thank you very much for joining you us. Got, you got to punch my card before I leave. <laughs> will do. Will do. And we have somebody here who is a first-time guest. Not only that, but she is also the very first actress to appear on my Actors Roundtable. So it's nice to know that mm -hmm. we're reaching out here a little bit. Her, She is a pastor at a church that's named – what is the name of your church, Sherry? I'm sorry. I just blanked. Trinity Christian Center. She is the pastor of Trinity, of Trinity Christian Ch Church up in Alaska. She was she played Ruth in the Book of Ruth. Uh, she's an accomplished singer, and uh, she played Laurie in The Reconciler. Please say hello to the lovely Sherry Morris. How are you, Sherry? Hello, hello. How are things up there? How are things up in Alaska? <laughs> They're great. It's great. We've had a great summer so far. All right. Well, like I said, it's nice to have you all here. Hold on a second here. I'm coming a little, oh, there, we are. there it is right there. Couldn't figure out how to put us all on there at once. Now, one of the things that I did realize after the fact that I arranged this is the fact that, you know, I, I'm calling this the a special edition Reconciler reunion here, but I think that should make some of us laugh. One thing that I should tell you about, Reconciler was based on a play. Not a lot of people, a lot of people know that. And um, one thing I should tell you real quickly about the play is if any of you have ever directed a play with people from your church, you know, no disrespect, but most people who are participating in church drama are not professional actors. They have families, they have jobs, they have schedules that are very hard to juggle. So Reconciler was actually written to accommodate that I wouldn't have to have the entire cast together to rehearse. In other words, I could rehearse with different sections, the cops in the car, the soldier and his son, and the three people trapped in the room. We didn't all come together until like the, uh, just before the dress rehearsal. The interesting thing is that Sean wound up shooting the film in a similar way because there were so many people who didn't overlap. The movie was kind of shot in, shot in sections. And I realized after I invited you all, none of the four of us worked a single day as actors together on this movie. <laughs> none, none of us did. If I remember things correctly, if I remember things correctly, uh, the warehouse that I was in was the first three days. Then we had Beacon Rock for two. Then came Frank's day where he was trapped in a car for two days with Lindsay. Excellent job, by the way. Then that mm -hmm. then day seven was everything's everything Detective Tilton, which was uh, Bob, and then the four days after that was Sherry, Sherry, Sherry. That was when we did that was when we did everything. <laughs> that was when they shot everything with you, and I was yeah. actually being taken back to the airport to fly back to Boston when you arrived to shoot. So that's <laughs> so we just got a really we just got a really quick hello. So this is this is we are actually all over the map as far as how we were involved in this film. Now, before we get to how we all got involved, uh, there's one thing that I've done for every one of these roundtables, and that is every first-time guest, I've asked them to give our viewers a little background on how they got into acting, and particularly Christian acting. Now, Bob, this is your third appearance, so you already did that on 
the first one. So if anybody wants to know Bob's background, watch the first video. And then Frank, <laughs> you did it on the second one, so you don't have to worry. That leaves us with Sherry. Ooh. Sherry, would yeah. you mind telling, would, since you are a, our first time guest, would you mind yeah. telling the people, how is it, how is it that you got involved in um, acting and the Book of Ruth and such? <laughs> Okay, well, I was singing in, in uh, Florida uh, at mar lago actually at Trump's Palace, and they were having a big event, a Young Adventures event, and there were, um, a there were movie producers there and different movie stars, and so when I was singing, um, one of the gentlemen, which was, um, oh, what's it, for Leapfrog Films? Remind me of his name. I'm not sure who that is. I'm not sure about that. Robert. He knows who he is. Um, he was the director. He was there. And um, so anyway, or one of the producers. So anyway, he asked if I would be interested in being in Ruth. And I said, yes, I would, I, you know, I would love that. It's always been a, a desire for me to be in film. And so um, I said, he said, well, you have any acting um, background? I said, no, but I'm a preacher's kid. You know, I can do, I can do, I've done plays and things, you know, so I, but I, I said, I, I would love to, I said, if, if I don't work out, just have someone else on set, just in case, just have, you know, give me the day, the first day and see what we can do. But I had memorized the entire script. I knew everybody's lines and I was ready. It's been over, but they changed the script like four or five times. So I, you know, so you, so Anyway, it, it was just a joy for me. Every single day going to work was a pleasure for me. I, I loved every minute of it. I just loved it. It was, you go, go to work singing. They had me praying over the, the cast and the crew every day. And it was just an incredible time. I, so that's how I got into acting. My first role, I had the lead role. First time ever acting. Wow. <laughs> that's, that's very interesting. Thanks for sharing that. Yeah. You, yeah. Set, you set the bar pretty high for yourself. <laughs> that is true. Can, can, yeah. Go ahead, Bob. Can I just say that I think uh, Sherry is the best looking grandmother I've ever had. <laughs> really? <laughs> hey, yeah, because you played a... you played the adult version of her grandson, right? I did. Yeah. Now, did you guys meet <laughs> when you were? I, I was a grandpa. Obed, you know. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Obed. And you were talking to you, all your scenes were talking to a young King David. Um, most. Yeah. yeah. Yes. yes. Now, did you meet Sherry when you were both working on that? Yes. Uh, we were actually, the, Sherry was in the dressing room when I was going through makeup, I believe. Uh, she yeah. and Carol O'Brien uh, were there. And then we had the actress from L.A. that did came, come in to be my wife. Uh, yeah. So everybody was there uh, for a period of time. And then I took off with the young man that played David. And uh, I don't know if I got to see you by the end of the day, Sherry, because you were getting ready then to go in to do yeah. your scenes with Naomi, I think. Naomi, yeah. yeah. Lester played uh, Naomi. Rebecca Holden, I think, was your the one that played. Um, who was the one that was my mother? Rebecca Holden was my mother in the play. Yeah. <laughs> I love how you guys are calling it a play was, instead of a film. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yes. But anyway, funny thing it is, was, oh, sorry, go ahead. I think I got a loose connection here. You were coming in yeah, a little bit late there. Going in and out, sorry. Oh, it's okay. It's okay. You know, depending on how you look at it here, this is either a reconciler reunion, a murder of innocence reunion, or a Book of Ruth reunion. Because we got two people <laughs> we got two people here who were in the Book of Ruth, two people who were in a murder of innocence, and then all four of us were in the reconciler. And uh, so what I'd like to do now, just real quickly, is I'm going to tell you guys a little secret about um, movies that you probably already know, but just for our viewing public here. Uh, a writer who is not a producer or a director doesn't really have any say in casting. Me and the twins were basically the only leverage that I, because Jeremy and Jordan Steele were friends of mine. And um, so I really, I, I got notices when all of you were attached to the movie. But the truth is, I actually don't have any earthly idea how any of you ended up in the film. <laughs> so I th just thought that I would as ask you all real quickly. We'll go around. If you could just tell me, how did you end up in my screenwriting debut, The Reconciler? Uh, Bob, you mind going first? Oh, no, not at all. 
Uh, actually, uh, it was through, uh, I think, a mutual friend of Sherry and mine uh, named Byron Jones. Yes. Uh, yeah. Byron knew about the film. I'm not quite sure his involvement, but he had worked with Sean, I think. And he called me up and they offered me the role. And I, you know, gratefully accepted. And uh, so it was really uh, through uh, Byron that I got into the film. Mm -hmm. Actually, your role was, was written specifically for you, Bob. That role was actually not, we were having trouble, I'll talk to this in just a few minutes, in just a moment, but we were actually having trouble making the film feature length. But before I get into that, uh, Frank, uh, your turn, sir. Um, well, I'm gonna say the exact same thing <laughs> that was just really? said uh, through a mutual friend, uh, through Byron Jones, um, okay. who gave me a call and, and said that there might be something for me. And I reached out to Sean and then it worked out. Um, and it was, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm glad that it happened. Yeah, and then you, of course, you didn't get the memo that the film's writer had watched an episode of Flashpoint you were in over a hundred times. And basically, uh, no, no, did not get that memo. But I'm <laughs> glad that you did. I'm yeah. glad that you did. Yeah, so it's yeah, you were you were one of the computer hacky hacker baddies in that episode. I forget to be honest I with you, was. I forget your character's name. I just remember you were one of the bad guys. Anyway. Uh, yeah, I, to be honest, I forget as well. I mean, the, the, you know, that script changed so they, they were changing that script before we were doing each scene. It was ridiculous. Yeah. Like, yeah. it was literally like before we would shoot each scene, they were changing the script on that. So yeah, I think I said this. Delight. Yeah, I think I said this in one of the other <laughs> roundtables. Don't get me started on the story of script changing when it comes to the original play Reconciler was based on. I'm not even sure there is an original mm -hmm. script because we were changing it as we were rehearsing. So Sherry, uh, were you, so you uh, got basically the same thing, is it? Or did you get involved in the project because of Byron? Byron Jones, Byron Jones and I, um, man, I don't even know, remember how we met, uh, but we had a, we had a, a company together called Mountaintop Entertainment, mm -hmm. Byron Jones. And um, so that's, we helped also produce the movie Union Bound. Okay. And it was in that, but Byron was the one that contacted Sean, and Sean contacted me uh, to do the to to do the film, Reconcile. Yes, yes, and you did, and you did a wonderful job. One of the things Thank that I, I mentioned this earlier. Uh, one of the things that is so apparently we've got Byron Jones's whole contribution to the film right here is what is well, what we have because I, I, um, uh, one other one other thing, Sherry, you would know better than I. Yeah. But I had heard that. Uh, actually, Ruth had had sort of run out of money. Yes. Um, and they had I to go found, back to do the. I found. And, I, and Byron, yeah, I think yes, I got wanna, that connection yeah. for Ruth as well. Yeah, I had. Um, I found the the first finances for Ruth. Um, with um, the company in Texas, and so um, that's how that that took place. And then uh, Byron uh, kind of, he helped step in and also helped us with um, TBN. TBN helped finish. <coughs> finish. And because uh, Jan really loved Carmen, you know, he was yeah. the, you know, I'm a fan too. Yeah, yeah so that, that really helped us, you know, that way. And so they were able to help us complete film, and uh, which I'm, I'm grateful for. It was it was a great time. I mean, I I enjoyed. I think more than anything, I enjoyed doing the Book of Ruth more than anything. It was a blast to me every single day to go to work, and it was fun. And of course, uh, Scott uh, Carter. Yes, yes. I was so impressed with him, and you know, we had um, and the producers that were the directors that were there. They they did an incredible job. And, I felt Scott, even when he came in, he, he really helped pull everything together. And I thought he did a great job. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Oh, well, thank you very much. One of, the, one of the interesting things was, is that I actually, you know, I said that was a fan of Carmen. Uh, Sherry, please don't uh, take this the wrong way. But prior to seeing the Book of Ruth, and uh, then, of course, you're working on Reconciler, I had not heard of you prior to that. And okay. uh, so, uh, to be honest with you, Carmen was the reason why I actually picked up the movie in the first place. Because I wanted, yeah. to, I know, he's he was someone he did his he did his riot movie many years ago and I uh, wa I watched that and uh, he's someone who he's a evangelist who has a tendency to ham it up on stage, so I always thought that he yes. I always thought he would he would make a, a good actor and then 
when I heard that he had a film coming out where he was playing a uh, policeman, which was Riot the movie, this was my surprise face. <laughs> yeah. Didn't, su didn't surprise me at all. Now, an interesting yeah. thing is, is that um, one of the reasons, one of the things that I should mention here is that when you're doing church drama, which is what Reconciler was originally written to be, um, having been involved in my church's Easter musical uh, ministry for many years, I came to, I found out that my church didn't have an attention span that spanned longer than 45 minutes to an hour. So I actually wrote the original play to only be about that long. We ended up, uh, Sean ended up wanting to do this as a movie because he was looking for something simple. And no matter how hard we stretched it, we could not get the movie longer than a 60 minute page and the re 60 pages. And the reason for that is because Sherry, your storyline was not in my original play. Sean wrote mm -hmm. that storyline completely from scratch. He would, and um, we had a, a funny thing happen with that in the fact that um, his original, oh, by the way, I think I should tell everybody out there watching that this is not a spoiler free reunion here. If you haven't seen The Reconciler yeah. yet, there, is, there are some uh, spoilers here. And uh, things went through things went through a lot of changes. And uh, there's actually something interesting about uh, your character's name, Sherry, Laurie. In my original play, I was not trapped in a room with two twin brothers. I was trapped in a room with a uh, adult mother and daughter. A adult mother and daughter from my church named Sally and Laurel actually played them. The mom was the one in the trunk. The daughter was the one who woke up on the floor. Oh. And... Sean and I had had the Steel Brothers attached to another project that we could never get off the ground. We're still trying to get off the ground to this day, and they have aged out and are too old for the parts now anyway. So wow. even if we get it done, they so I kind of saw the writing in the wall. Things were headed in that direction. And so I said to Sean, Sean, in an, we have two options here. You can hold an audition and we can maybe find two ladies that I have good chemistry with. Or we can rewrite the script and kind of have this be us keeping our promise to Jeremy and Jordan. So that's the reason that's the reason why the script got changed. Now, when you make one change, it kind of ripples. In my original play, the two cops in the car were both guys. We changed one of them to a lady because we had lost the two ladies. But in the original play, the daughter's name was Laurie. So that's the reason Aww. why your character's name. We just I said. <laughs> And Sean was, Sean, was great, Sean was great about keeping me involved in the rewrites and the auditions. I mean, he wrote your whole storyline from scratch, but he would always come back to me and say, is this all right? Is this all right? And another interesting thing was, is that, and this is the last thing I'll say before we move on to, uh, before we move on to questions again, is the fact that, remember the big, re this is why I said, spoiler alert, remember the big revelation, Laurie, that you turn out to be the wife and mother of Jeff and JR towards the end of the film? Mm -hmm. That wasn't originally yeah. what we were going to do. The original <laughs> surprise was going to be the last shot of the movie was you walk was going to be you walking into a restaurant, sitting down at a table and saying, so I hear that you claim to have an encourage an encounter with an angel and the picture was going to turn around and it was going to be the twins. And that was going to be that was oh. going to be that was going to be the original ending. But then Sean writes it. I get the script and I call him up and I say, uh, Sean, uh, that ending you told me about isn't in here. And he goes, yeah, I got yeah. there and it felt forced. It felt like it didn't yeah. work. And so we yeah. solved the problem of our script being too short only to create the other problem of the fact that we now had a script with two completely separate storylines that didn't intersect at all. Yeah. So, so then the problem became, okay, how do we fix this? And we kept on trying, we came up with a ton of ideas that would take me too long to mention as to how to connect you to the reconciler story, none of which we liked. And then one night at one thirty in the morning, I woke up and had the idea of connecting you to one of the subplots rather than the main story. And I, call, I uh, called, thankfully it was only 10.30 at night, Sean's time. And I said, what if we, you know, I said to Sean, you know that scene where Sherry comes, Sherry's, where you were, it wasn't you yet, it was Laurie, sorry. Where, where Laurie comes mm -hmm. back and she uh, is in an open house, is in an empty house and then she starts reading the Bible and he goes, yeah. I go, well, what if we have her come home and we reveal she's related to Jeff and JR? And he went mm -hmm. silent on the other end of the phone. He, he, went silent, mm -hmm. he went silent on the other phone and he goes, Scott, I think you just solved three problems the script was having because he thought we needed another scene of the father and son. We thought we weren't making your drifting away from the Lord clear enough. And mm -hmm. that little 30 second scene fixed all that. So fix it. That's fix it. good. So anyway, I knew this was going to happen to be honest with you. I knew that if I did a round table about the very first movie I wrote, I knew that I was going to end up doing a lot of the talking here. I apologize for going on and on and on. But anyway, um, you know what I think? I think I was wrong about what I said here. This is one thing that um, I've done on all of my roundtables, which is the hat. Now, Sherry, I don't know if you know what this is. I've explained it to Frank and Bob in the past. 
This is um, before the first round table that I did, I wrote down a whole bunch of questions that I could ask in case we got to a point where nobody was talking or nobody had anything to say. And then I thought, you know, I could just have them off to the side and pick one that I would want to ask the folks, or I could put them in a hat and shake them up and pull one out at random. And I just, I just thought that would be a lot more fun. So I have six questions here related to being involved in the reconciler. I have no idea which one I'm going to pull out first. And uh, you guys can just answer. And by the way, you are free to not answer these if you want to. You can plead the fifth, or if you don't feel comfortable <laughs> answering it, it's more, more than fine. Okay, well, you're all, you're all smiling except for Bob. So but that's because he's been, through, he's been, this is his third time through this. So that's the reason why he's I don't done. hear too well. I was still caught up when you said something about a fifth. What? Oh, <laughs> I said you, you are allowed to plead the fifth, I said. Oh, I mean, oh, you, you, oh that fifth. Okay, okay, thank you. Yeah, I got to check the wireless <laughs> connection here in my apartment because I'm not sure it's working too well. Okay, this is the first question that I pulled out. Let's see here. Let's see here. All right. Um, oh, wow. Putting you guys on the spot here right away. Did you, did you, uh, this is actually basically a simple yes or no question. Did you enjoy being a part of the reconciler? Uh, Bob. Oh, absolutely. Uh, just let me add to that though. Of course, besides being uh, reunited uh, with Sherry, even though we didn't have scenes together, I became a big man in my family because of Rowdy Roddy Piper. They were oh, devoted yes. wrestling fans. And the fact that dad was going to be in a movie with him, they thought was great. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Thank you. Frank, do you have anything to say about your experiences? Um, yes, I, did, I absolutely did enjoy it. Uh, I'm glad that, it, that I did. Um, I had a great time working with uh, Lindsay as well. And um, we actually got together the, um, the day before, just to sort of go over our, our, our scenes that we had together. And um, especially because we were supposed to be partners that had worked together for a while, we wanted to sort of build a little bit of a chemistry, even though we only had, you know, a couple hours to do so. Um, but uh, I really enjoyed that time. And uh, being confined in the, in the vehicle definitely added to it as well. Um, so, yeah, no, it was, it was a great experience, absolutely. You know, there's actually a section of the gag reel on the DVD that is entitled The Bill and Stacy Show, which is all of you and Stacy's outtakes from the from the movie. So you guys, not to mention Jared O'Flaherty. I read, I read it. I, um, Sherry, uh, I didn't bring it with me this time, but Jared O'Flaherty, who does the show Vindication, he really liked the film and he had something to say that he said that, um, Lindsay and Frank's uh, acting was, was a Hollywood grade. And I totally agree with him. You guys definitely did. I remember I, the funny thing is Frank, I've, I haven't said this in the past, but that's the closest I ever got to doing a scene with you because I was the guy reading the lines of the tape recorder when you guys were that's actually right. filming. The tape recorder didn't actually work. They, it was replaced with Sean's voice in post-production, but it was me reading the lines off to the side. I think it was because um, they just wanted to give me something to do, so I didn't keep on quoting Flashpoint lines for, for you. Uh, but anyway, <laughs> oh, wow, my goodness, we are at the 10-minute mark already. Time is just flying by here. Uh, Sherry, uh, what about you? You have anything to say about your experiences on the movie? Yeah, it was it was uh, it was great. I, you know, I enjoyed working with uh, Sean as the director. I thought he was great, uh, easy to work with. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, every director is different, and uh, they do things a little different to me. And but uh, I liked his his uh, presence, and and I enjoyed I enjoyed working with him. I enjoyed working with the little girl. <laughs> uh, it was precious. And, you know, like, like I say, every, every time you do a film, it's a different, you know, it's a different experience. So, but I always enjoy um, new adventures. So it was fun. I enjoyed it. Interesting little tidbit about that little girl. Uh, acting runs yeah. in the family. Her dad is actually the main villain in Sean's upcoming film, The Narrow Road, which, oh, wow. uh, which I was not involved in, but um. He yeah. he, her dad plays a gangster with a Russian accent. I, I, I've seen the rough cut of the film. It's still in, po it's still in post, but uh, Sean's hoping to get that done pretty soon. Actually, Robert, I want to thank you for answering the question the way you did, because uh, something real interesting here. Um, I can't tell you how many times I have told somebody about this, and I've handed them a copy of the film, and they look at it and they go, wait a minute, is that Rowdy Piper? And I'm like, yeah, we were actually his last movie. And then the very yeah. next question they asked me is, well, what was he like? And I unfortunately have to say, I don't know, because I was already back in Boston the one day he filmed. In fact, yeah, Sherry, you, were the, you were the only person, you were the only, he only was in two scenes and 
he, you, yeah. you played opposite him in both scenes. So this might yeah. be a good time while we have time. What was it like working with Rowdy Piper? Because you're the only person from the cast who can answer that question. Yeah, he was, you know, he was gruff, you know, rough type, you know, because that's his personality anyway. Right. And so uh, working with him, and he was just, you know, he could bring it out of you, you know, a bit, you know. Mm -hmm. So some of those scenes, he was, uh, he, he was, he was, it was fun. I enjoyed working with him. So um, just that, you know, because he had that, you know, that gruff attitude, you know. He was very Got good. From the, from, go ahead. Yeah, he's, he's very good at playing a demanding boss, I noticed. Yeah, demanding. And you so like, you're like, ah! <laughs> you know, so it was good. It was fun. Yeah. One yeah. of the only one of the only tra one of the tragedies was the fact that there if you watch the movie there are some people have said that there's some scenes where it's hard to understand Roddy in his scenes and unfortunately <laughs> that's because he passed away before Sean had a chance to R uh, ADR any of his scenes that um mm. could have he could have fixed and he didn't feel right about asking yeah. like a sound like actor to, I mean how do you Roddy Piper is one of those people that nobody sounds like so how do you bring in somebody to ADR his lines you know what I mean so, right all right Okay, we're actually about, a, we got about six minutes here. Let's see what we have next. All right, next one. Okay, I'm having trouble reading my own writing. We have to get another one here, sorry about that. <laughs> yeah, when you can't read it, forget it and move on. <laughs> okay. Anybody in your life that you think could benefit from the reconciler method of get, of making up? <laughs> that was a horrible question. Don't answer that. Don't answer that. I did these ones, but I did these ones very quick. I'm sorry. No, but you know, but you know what, though, Scott. I think like I, I think I mentioned this the last round table that you know with with COVID uh, nineteen with a lot of people being quarantined. You know, God has been using this to, with for time for people to to work out some things. Unfortunately, things have gone in another direction as well. When you yeah. look at, you know, you know, uh, spousal abuse up 400 percent, like that's just it's, it's horrible. Um, yeah. But but on the flip side, there is, there's some really good things happening with families getting back together and families really sort of, um, you know, and, and again, with what's happening in, in, in the U.S. and around the world with lines of communication being open already with parents having to teach their kids. Um, now they're able to educate them about you know, what's going on in the world. And that's just, that's, it's, it's beautiful. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You didn't say it on the first round table. You said before we started recording the last round table, you had said that there was oh. kind, of, there's kind of like a nation, there's kind of like a nationwide reconciler experiment going on. Yeah. Which I appreciate yeah. it. Yeah. Okay. I don't, like I said, I didn't put much thought into these questions like I did, but this is one that I was curious about. Um, we kind of, I'll just explain it actually real quickly. Um, one of the things that you might notice about the story is the fact that we didn't put a lot of thought into people's names. Everybody kind of has one name, like uh, Bob is Detective Tilton. We never learned your first name. Uh, Frank, you were just detect. You were just Bill. We never found out your last name. Same thing with well, same thing. Same thing with Laurie. And one thing that I know that sometimes actors who will be on sets, in order to kind of figure out their motivation and stuff, will try to think more about their character. I was wondering, was there anything that you like maybe filled, filled in the blank about your character when you were, when you were doing this? Cause we gave you all so little information about the character. Or are you all not actors I, who work that way? I think I was just so busy trying to remember my lines cause I had to run through one scene right after the other all day long. So, yeah. you know, that was and probably then, the, the main thing. Yeah. One, one, one interesting thing here, you guys, like I said, I'm, th I'm thinking of a lot of little tidbits as we're doing this. An interesting thing about uh, your involvement in the project, Bob, is that uh, you came in on day seven. And at that point, uh, I had wrapped my entire filming and the Steel Brothers had wrapped everything except their scene with you. So the last scene of the film and the last thing the Steel Brothers shot had to be the very first thing you filmed. So the very last scene of the movie was the first thing that you filmed. And what I love, about it, it's a marking of a good actor if you can't tell that unless somebody told you. Now, part of it is editing, but also part of it is, uh, par part of it is also a performance. I've always, having only worked on three films, I always wonder what that's like when you have to shoot things out of order. And like, for example, right after you shot that scene was the scene where you were in the office talking about finding them. But in reality, you had already shot the scene where you, where you found them. So 
that's I think that's where you really depend upon a great director like Sean. Yeah. I mean, that's yes. he, he can that's sort of the glue that makes mm -hmm. sure you're anchored in the right way. I mean, Sean did a great job of that. Yeah, he does. Yeah, Frank. Frank and I went on to work with him in A Murder of Innocence, and then Sherry, you Sherry, prior to that, you worked with him on Out of the Darkness. Mm -hmm. uh, Bob, we haven't forgotten about you. It's just that there's a for for the two projects that Sean and I have worked together on. I think there's probably about four or five we've tried to get off the ground that sadly we haven't been able to make any headway on. So, yet, yet, there you go. Yes, yes, yes. yes. That Delay is, is not denial. That's yeah. right. Amen. That's Amen. Well, you know, what, <laughs> you know what's interesting is. I was reading an article. I don't know how many of you have seen this, and Frank, the rules might apply to your area different because you're in another country. But I was reading the other day. You were talking about things that are happening because of COVID. I was reading the other day the new union requirements for uh, Hollywood to get back up and running again, and it included things like changing the way they do craft services, how they have to do temperature change, cleanliness of the set, and stuff like that. But there was one thing that I couldn't uh, get over was on the list. It, it said, um, scenes with large crowds are not recommended. Uh, and then it said, sex scenes are not recommended. Fight scenes are not recommended. <laughs> so I'm looking at this and I'm going, okay, this could be a chance for the faith-based entertainment industry to thrive because we tend not to have huge budgets and we don't put any of that junk in our stuff. I mean, I like a little action here or there. I mean, Bob, you drew a gun in Reconciler, but you didn't shoot anybody. You know what I mean? So that's hardly what I would call a fight scene. So, I mean, you know, I did a film years ago called The Replacements, and they actually had social distancing. We were at the Raven Stadium in Baltimore, and they had to fill the stands, and half of the stands was cardboard people, and then they interspaced real people ever so often. So the <laughs> thing looked full from a distance, but actually probably only a quarter of them were, were real yeah. people, and they were all socially distanced. So it was way ahead of its time yes wow. <laughs> for for uh for us in canada i don't know if it's the same thing as in the states but right now we're allowed to start shooting again but unfortunately what's happening is that insurance companies don't want to insure productions for COVID 19. so oh, yeah. it's kind of a it's, it's so non-union projects will probably be able to shoot but that's about it and to go back to your last question yes uh i did do some work about the character beforehand and like I said, Lindsay and I did get together before just to create a bit of a, a relationship. And you did a great job. A great yes, job. Thank you. And unfortunately, we've had so much fun. We're now at the one minute mark, which means this could shut off at any time. Okay. So I thank you guys. I hope I didn't do too much of the talking here. I thank you all for taking time out of your schedule. And uh, thank you all for being on this special edition of a Reconciler Reunion with the Great Scots Roundtable. I'm sure thank I'll talk to you soon. Have yeah. a wonderful day and God bless. Thanks, okay. guys. Thank you. Thank you. God bless you guys. God bless you.